Hello and welcome to another episode of Road to Rehab. I'm Prabh Jyot, an occupational therapist spreading the word on rehabilitation. We talked about earlier that there are some senses in our body, how they work, what are the superficial, deep or combined sensations. But there was something else that I mentioned, sensory processing disorders. What are they? As the term itself implies, senses and processing that we are not able to process the senses that are present in our environment, the information that comes to our brain based on those senses. Let's see how they are categorized just to understand what our kids might have or even some adults might have based on that. The first category is called as sensory modulation. So when we modulate, we talk about frequencies, pitch, things like that. So if you're not able to modulate or we are not able to appreciate whether a thing is high or low, that is where the problem comes. So somebody touches it. Either we feel that, okay, it was too much. We don't want that touch or the touch is there. It stays there for a very long time and we don't care about it. We do not, it doesn't matter to us or it can go to as extreme as we want to touch everything that comes around us. All of this constitutes sensory modulation. There are three forms in which sensory modulation problems can be seen. Either the response is too much, over responsive. The response is not there like I don't care about it, under responsiveness or sensory seeking, craving. You want that sensation so much. It is absolutely necessary so that you can keep your arousal, your attention to the best level. The over-responsive child or adult will be called as an avoider. They would avoid certain kind of things. They could avoid movements. They could avoid touching things. They would hate when they are hugged or any kind of pressure that is given to them. They might avoid certain tastes. They might avoid certain uh, smells, all these things. Or they would really not want to do certain routine activities. They are not liking going to the water. They don't like messiness. All of this comes under over responsiveness. The second category is under responsiveness. When you kind of don't care. You don't have a regard for what is touching you or what sensory stimulus is coming to you. So if you're touching something for too long, you don't care. If you are placed in water, for example, while taking bath for too long, that doesn't matter to the child. If you take out, the child is even okay with that. But staying there for hours on will also not matter. Or maybe the child goes to the swings and if you keep the child on the swing for maybe two hours, the child is okay with that. So the brain response is so late that they don't feel any kind of dizziness, they don't feel any kind of extreme uh, cold with the water bath or anything. And then finally comes the seeker or the craving person. This kind of child or adult would want certain senses in certain extremes. Like they want to go on the swing all the time. They will ask you to take them on a swing if they are movement based or they will want to run all the time pretty much unnecessarily like purposelessly or they want to touch certain things or they want pressure so they really like hug they want to touch you and grab you really hard they like their soft toys so much that they want to grab them or hug them all the time but there could be a mismatch over here the child could be over responsive to certain senses but under responsive or a seeker for some other senses so this usually tends to happen in kids who have autism spectrum or associated adhd Second category after all these sensory modulation problems becomes sensory based motor problems. Now what are these? As I said motor, it relates to our movements. So such kind of children are not very comfortable with doing new tasks. Question why? Because they can be a category known as fumblers that it is difficult for them to plan things easily. If you tell them you have to come and brush your teeth. First of all, planning the entire thing that you need to go, take out your brush, apply paste on it, close it, keep it back, brush your teeth after that, clean the brush or what movements they need to do like cleaning their teeth all around, cleaning their tongue. They don't know how to plan the entire thing, a term known as dyspraxia.
so because the planning is so difficult for them they try to avoid doing new tasks even some routine tasks but if practice is given to them for their tasks they might learn them on a routine basis but again if something new is introduced or a new form in the task is introduced to them they would avoid it for example you have made the child learn how to put on overhead shirts and remove them but now you say no we can try button shirts again also they would not want to do that because again it's a new concept to learn another form of it which we would be where the child will be more like a slumper it will affect the posture of the child more the sensations that so the child is so comfortable in sitting or standing certain positions the child will enjoy so much that they would want to just slump and just sit over there in that position and not want to move too much and the final third category is sensory discrimination disorders as we said earlier discrimination what would you mean by that when you understand one sensation from another so any kind of new experience every time the child is given a routine task it will be like a new experience for the child they would just not know how to do it because all their sensations are mixed up they cannot figure out one from the other they might sometimes feel that okay I can feel this particular taste as sweet and at the other time you would say okay no it's not feeling sweet today it's feeling something else although it was the same toothpaste that the child or the same food item that was presented to the child so it will be so messed up in their head that they would not want any new experiences also these child will, children will have problems in planning their movements and the planning will happen every time you cannot make repetitions help them or you have to keep, keep things in such a simple form so that they are able to perform it they do not want to do it in any new way at all so this is the different category of sensory disorders or sensory processing disorders as we said please if you like the channel leave a like subscribe and we will meet again bye